Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Orchestrated and designed with you in mind. Orchestrated and designed with me in mind. Nothing that will happen today is going to catch God off guard. That's one thing that I love about him. Good morning. Welcome. Come on in the room. Join me for a morning makeover. Let's get our day set, fixed, and focused. Whew. Invite a friend to the broadcast. Make sure you share the broadcast. Don't just get all this good word for yourself. Make sure you share it for somebody with somebody else, people of God. All right, people of God. Listen, there is a word from the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. All right, we're talking about the mix-up this morning. We're talking about the mix-up. Grab your Bible this morning. Grab your notepad. Always have your little notepad because you never know what nugget's going to hit that's just for you. That's going to bless you in just a special way. All right. We're talking about the mix-up this morning, people of God. And we're going to start in 1 Kings 17. Um... We're going to talk about Elijah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this word on today. Lord, send it with power and demonstration. Lord, allow someone to get a word of clarity, someone else to get a word of freedom, someone else to get a word of wisdom, someone else to get a word of knowledge, Lord. We come to you. No other help we know. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're talking about the mix-up this morning. I got... um. This was pointed out to me yesterday, and I was like, man, this is just, whew, wow. This this is something that we're missing as the body of Christ, and we got to get this part. If not, we're going to keep having messed up relationships, and we're going to keep having things that don't have to be in place, things that don't have to happen. But we got to get this understanding. There's an understanding that we have to get. First Kings Thank you, God. Thank you, God. First Kings chapter 17, and we're going to start at verse 8. First Kings 17, verse 8. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and asked her, would you please bring me a little, a little water in my cup? And as she was going to get it, he called her, bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook for my last meal, and then my son and I will die. But Elijah told her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your container until the time the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. All right, we're talking about the mix-up. And I'm like, okay, Lord, well, help me to understand. Many of us are getting in relationships and we see somebody and we like, girl, I done found my husband. I done found my wife. And it ain't about your husband. And it ain't about your wife. God's intention for the relationship, God's intention for the connection was ministry. It wasn't marriage. God's intention for the relationship was ministry. We always think when it's a man, when it's a woman, girl, it got to be my husband. It got to be my wife. Come on in the room, people of God. Good morning, man of God. Listen, it was never some of these things we put together as relationships. God was like, I just wanted y'all that he listen. When the Lord told Elijah, go and live in the village of Zarephath, I've instructed a widow to feed you. 
the Lord had already put a seed. When he instructed her, he already put a seed. There was a seed in her belly that came from God. That when you see this man of God, something in you is going to connect. When you see him, when you hear his words, something's going to connect. So they began to, he goes where the Lord tells him to go and they're having this conversation. And while they're having this conversation, um, Elijah told her, you know, hey, listen, don't be afraid. Go make some bread, make me some first. And then, you know, after you make me some, then make some for you and your son. The Lord said he's going to bless it. Something when he, when he spoke to her, something in his words, it hit her. It, it, and we would call it chemistry. Girl, we got chemistry. When he speaks to me, something is me. I just, it just moves. It just, when she speaks her words, it's, it's just the seed that God has planted on the inside of you long ago. And they come and they're watering it. One plants, one waters, but it is God that gives the increase. And we're getting connected to people that God wanted you to minister to. And you're marrying them. And now you're trying to figure out why this is so hard. Maybe it was not God's intention to marry them. It was just a ministry relationship. But I have chemistry, but I connect with that person. It's something when they speak, when they words, I just, I don't have no problem. You know, come on, people of God. We got to look in a bigger spectrum. Because then a lot of times churches will teach you, oh, men minister to minister men and women minister to women. And all that's good. And I understand that helps keep the lines from being crossed. But the Lord sent the man. And he sent the woman. Okay. To feed the man. But girl, he's down and out. You know what I'm saying? He came. He, he's so good to my son. He's so good to, you know, he's such a good man. And so, you know, he's, he's a man of God. He can preach, pray, and prophesy. She realized, I'm not here. It ain't my situation. She might have thought he was fine. I don't know. I wasn't there. But at the end of the day, let's keep the contain the let's keep our relationships in the right containers. Let's keep it open to what God are you doing? What are you doing? Because some people are good. And and that's great. But you know, Adam, when he seen Eve, he said, She is bone of my bone. And she is flesh of my flesh. See, some people, you're just, because they accept your help, y'all nice to each other. You just, in your mind, girl, that's my husband. That is my wife. No, listen, wait a minute. She ain't even bone of your bone. She ain't even built like you. She's not, it's, it's like Adam, when he went, he seen, you know, he seen the giraffe. She was beautiful. And he seen the elephant. They was beautiful. And he seen the monkey. He was like, yeah, that's a beautiful. And he seen the jaguar. Like, oh yeah, that's beautiful. But is she bone of my bone? Is she really flesh of my flesh? Is she built like me is she structured like me does she believe is she someone that can walk beside me or do i have to minister to her yes marriage is ministry you always have to encourage a spouse i'm not saying that but some of us are getting into relationships that god only put together for ministry it was not for you to marry that person good morning to those of you that are just now coming in Whew. Wow. Very, 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 very interesting. I said, God, that is, well, I never, it just kind of got me, it, it took me to a place like, wow. We always think somebody is our husband and our wife because that's the only relationship that we're really taught. You don't know. It may just be the way that the Lord uses you, they're going to respond. And so it's the only, you're, you're who God is sending because of the connection and something that he's already put in, in them and it's something in you. And when y'all talk, it's like Mary and Elizabeth, they, they baby leaped. Come on. They was like, ooh, Lord, when they came together, the baby leaped. Something in you leaps. Girl, he just, you calling it chemistry, but it's just God. And because the woman of God was not confused, because she realized this is a man of God. I shouldn't be lusting after him. I shouldn't be looking at his biceps, his triceps, and none of those other things. Good morning, those of you that are just coming in. She was she was con focused on what she had to do. Okay, she listened to his words. He didn't be like, you know, she's so submissive to me. She listens to my words. and She didn't even hesitate. She didn't cuss back at me, fuss back at me, whatever I told her to do. It's because the Lord planted a seed in her heart. Don't mix up ministry for the one you're supposed to marry 
okay? I don't know who this message specifically is for. It's for everybody, but it's specifically for somebody that you're looking at somebody like, I think that's my wife. I think that's my husband. And it's just, and then you're disappointed because they don't hit right at the, you know, you poured into them, come on. But it was never, I know they look good and you can just see the potential on the other side, been there, done that, got the cat suit, the body suit, come on in the room. Listen, but at the end of the day, you got to check with God. Okay. See, sometimes God knows how to draw you in. You might've thought it was your husband because you wouldn't have went no other time. You wouldn't have connected no other way. So you had to, the Lord allowed you to perceive it as that, but stay open. Stay open. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Every man of God that I've asked that, they, they, I just still haven't got an answer that was, um, I'm just waiting on the verdict. When I asked the man of God, how do you love your wife like Christ loved the church? Nine times out of ten, this is what they say. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, I mean, like Christ loved the church. No, that ain't, that, that's not, see, you can't cover me. Because first of all, wait, you don't even know how, he, how did he love the church? How did he love the church? It's something that we have to examine. We're, we're signing up for marriage when we really still need to be ministered to. Wives, submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord. If you've never submitted yourself to God, it's, you're going to have a hard time submitting to your husband. If you've never submitted and trusted the hand of God, come on, people of God, we got to understand what is God saying? What is he doing? What? Okay, because just because he said it today, he's God, he can shift. I know they say, oh, he's, you know, he changes not. He changes not. That's true. But his, you don't know his end intention. You put a period where God put a comma. Is that Bible? Good. I'm glad you asked. Let's take it to Genesis 22. Abraham, kill your son. Okay, God, I'm going to prayer. I'm going to kill my son. Wait a minute. At the we we down to the nitty and the gritty. Abraham, Abraham. Come on, Abraham, Abraham. Don't kill your son. I just wanted to make sure your heart was obedient. I just wanted to make sure that we're still in fellowship. I wanted to make sure you that you love nothing more than me. God, I bless your name. God is so amazing and he is so faithful and, and, and it's just beautiful to see all the wonderful things. I love God, y'all. I love God because he is going to do some amazing things for the people of God that, that keep tuning in to the makeover ministry and they keep stumbling. You can't come across this page and your life not be changed. So God bless you. Whoever just typed that on the screen. God, I promise you when the Lord snatch you up, come back. Cause I can't wait to hear the testimony. I shared something on TikTok yesterday about, um, about the Lord, um, and how we got to depend on God. Cause we're in perilous times. And somebody said, it's okay, man. We know how to kill and steal. What? Wait a minute. Okay, bless God. I love it because the Lord just, I, I promise you, it was like the Spirit of God just highlighted that comment. And I told him, listen, the, the Lord going to give you a Paul Saul experience. Come on in the room. And I can't wait to hear the testimony because you clicked on the broadcast. See, I don't know about your TikTok. I don't know about your Facebook. And I don't know about your YouTube. But I just believe that the power of God and that the Spirit of God, you can't come nigh my tent and not get some glory on you. Come on in the room. And you ain't even got to want it. But because you took the time out to comment on the screen and write you a little something extra right there come on trying to be funny Woo, jesus you got the right one you got the right tiktok you got the right facebook and you got the right youtube listen it's not about me it's about the spirit of god Come on, Saul did not want to be, he didn't ask to be saved. He was good, he was do he was good doing whatever it is that he wanted to do, whichever way he was doing it, how he was doing it. His way was good for him. Come on in the room. All of those good things. And it's so amazing that honey, the Lord met him right there on the road to Damascus, snatched him up, come on in the room. The glory, he had a glory encounter. And he was never the same. Glory. Mm, mm, mm. 
God, I bless your name. He is merciful. God is merciful. Yes, he is. But he's so merciful that he told you that hell is real and turn from your wicked ways. You don't get to, you can't even go in the store without a mask. We, we, listen, you can't even go in the, they got all these rules. They say you can't travel to certain countries without the vaccine. If you think that the earth has rules, how you, why would you, why would we think that there is no rules to heaven? He is God. He is God. You, he, he has rules. It's not to hurt you. He's giving you the instructions. It's just like it's a GPS to heaven. You have to follow his way and his will. You don't just get to walk into college. You can't just walk in the, in the White House without rules. How much more? We got to understand, yes, God is merciful and he is kind, but he's so merciful and he's so kind that he has given you his son so that you can turn from your wicked ways. What else do you want the man to do? So we, we're, it's like we believe that heaven is um, heaven is real. Everybody's going to heaven, but hell is not real. What would be the point of that? That doesn't even make any sense. Mm, mm, mm. God, I bless your name. Woo, glory. May the spirit of truth flood you like never before. May the spirit of God arrest you like never before. I can't wait to hear your testimony, woman of God. Woo, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I bless your name. Oh, thank you, God. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. Don't mix up ministry for marriage and relationship. Okay, God, what are you doing today? Keep checking back in. Keep checking back in. Keep checking back in. Come on. Because we want to make sure that we're we're clear. It's so important to understand the relationship. Each relationship, I'm not even talking about like um, dating relationships, but it's important to understand which, who people are. You got to know the status of each relationship in your life. I need you to calibrate right now. Do do a, do an evaluation. Each person that is in your close quarters, okay? Each person that is in your close quarters. I need you to do an evaluation of the relationship. Who are they to you? Okay, because if you don't know who the people are properly, you may mishandle them. You may count them as common. See, you got three different levels. You got the, the person that is, is the mentor, that is the leader. You got the person in your life that is a peer. And then you got the person that is a student. You got to know which ones, which ones are the leaders, which ones are over you, which ones are the mentors, which ones are the peers that are on your same level, and which ones are you teaching? Because sometimes we get it confused. We get it confused. But you have, it's just like going in math class. If you if you go in math class and you you think that you're the teacher, you, you don't know, sit in your seat. Johnny, sit in your seat. Come on. You'll be able to take instruction better. Some people you're counting as a peer, you're counting them on the same level and God has put them over you. And it's not about age. It's not about a thorough woman. It's not about a thorough man. There's no gender, no age, no color, no creed in the kingdom of God. Don't worry about that. Okay. You have to know who the relationships, because if you don't know the relationships, then you can mishandle the person and miss what God is teaching you through that person. Why has God brought this connection together? What is the purpose? If they're over me, then that means you're a cup. And it means they're the pitcher and they pour into you. How many times you've been to the restaurant and somebody says, okay, I'll come to bring water and you take your cup and pour it back into the pitcher? No. You got to know which way the pour is going. Okay. You're someone left. If you're supposed to be getting poured into, drink. I had someone tell me one time when you are in a mentor relationship and someone has and the Lord has blessed you with a mentor and someone that's over you to pour into your life. When y'all on the phone more, you should be more quiet. You should just be soaking it up. You should just be taking it in. OK. And, and it's so beautiful if we learn that and stop being so prideful. I've been trying to find some hairstylists to teach everything I know. I got 27 years of experience. And I've created so many amazing and wonderful uh, hair extension techniques down through the years that can feed, help you feed your family for the rest of your days. But people have so much pride and they think they're doing it right. But when I see when people come and sit in my chair and I'm like, they did this to your hair and charged you money. It's crazy. 
but we have so much pride, but they may, oh, she's a hairdresser and I'm a hairdresser. We're on the same level. We're not on the same level. We're not on the same level. So we have to understand that God will send somebody to pour into you, but you got to be willing to drink. You got to be willing to receive. You got to be willing to trust that they're not coming to hurt you. We say some stuff we're calling church hurt is just correction. Okay. You have to be, if you're, if they never correct you, they don't love you. If they only encourage you, they're only a cheerleader. Come on, they're not a leader. They're a cheerleader. It's the difference between a leader. A leader loves you enough to encourage you and correct you. But if I'm only saying, that's so good. Good job. Go ahead. Woo. You're doing good. No, I appreciate what you did, but that was not good. It was too much. You got to be willing to be corrected. You got to be willing to know that you, that's why you have to know the status of your relationship. Are they above me or are they under me? Where, where am I at in this? Or are they equal to me? Do they keep me level? Which way? So that I don't mishandle the relationship. Because what I've learned about God is that some people, the Lord sends them for a season. And, it, and let's just say that they were sent to be a mentor to you, to pour into you. But you see them as a peer. And so you waste it. You don't go to them. You don't, you know, you don't call and cry, cry, pray with them. You don't, you don't talk about real things. You want to talk about fashion. And you want to talk about stuff that's not. Listen, and the Lord, just me, I don't know about nobody else. But how he uses me, he puts me in people's lives for a season. And when God says go, I got to go because it's somebody else somewhere. So if you didn't learn what you were supposed to learn in that season, I can't. What can I do? I can't do nothing. Come on. So we have to understand. And then your peers are so important because your peers check you out of eye. They check you out of eye. Okay. They like, girl, now you know that's too much. And people say, oh, they hating on me. Uh, Stephen Darby has a, a message on YouTube and he's, it's called all your, all your haters ain't lying. Okay. Some of us stuff, we're, we're so prideful and we're so full of ourselves. You don't know somebody's trying to help you. They might not know how to say it right. They might not. But that doesn't make it not true. So I need us to process where are you at? Are you a student? Am I learning in this season? Am I in a season of learning? If I'm learning, let me just take it all in. You can't be trying to teach and you in kindergarten. How's the kindergarten of teaching? Who you teaching? You in kindergarten in Christ and you always got a word for somebody. God can use who he wants to use. So I'm never limiting God. But I'm saying know where you are. And you might be in one season where you a teacher and one season where you a student. You might be in the same season in one area you're a teacher. Because let's just say your kids are grown and raised. You can talk about raising kids. You can talk about what you did right. You can talk about what you did wrong. But it may come to, you. the Lord may be raising you up in the area of the prophetic. And you don't understand my first prophecy. What? I didn't even believe in it. I wasn't even raised like that. What? So now you're the student. So you got to see yourself correctly. Don't mix up the relationship categories because it throws off God's intention for the relationship. Mentors, leaders, spiritual mothers, spiritual fathers, pastors, apostles, they are very important to the body. I always say, you know, God, you know, you can't just have on peer level, we all see at the same. We all, I mean, they might be looking out for you, but they only can see right here. When God brings someone else that can see further, you might be like, I just don't even know why I don't I don't want to do this. And they like, I know, but just do it anyway. But I don't want to do it. But you have to trust who God sends. Because you might not understand it, but they can see further. God has shown them where he wants you to get to. So you can't get stuck and you can't get stagnant. You got to be willing to, I don't know everything. I don't know everything. I don't know everything. No one knows everything. You ain't God. He wouldn't have, he would have no need to have sent his son if he could just send you. So we have to be willing to let God be God in our lives and not mix up our relationships. Mentors, I, I promise you, I bless God. I bless God for the man of God that the Lord sent. And it wasn't about no dating. It wasn't about no none of that. I've never even seen my first mentor. I never seen, I've never to this day, never seen his face. And we, he mentored me for three years over the phone. And I mean, he would spend hours, sometimes two, two, three hours. Um, we would just be on the phone and he would just be pouring into me, training me. He said, when he first met me, he said, Sister Jay, he said, 
when he, the first conversation, he said, you know, God has called you to, what has God called you to do? That's what he asked me. What has God called you to do? And at that time, I said, you know, I think God's called me to be a prophetess. And he was like, okay. And so he said, you're too nice. That niceness, it has to go. I'm not saying you got to be rude. I'm not saying you got to be nasty. But you're, you're too, people will take your kindness for weakness. You have to be more firm. You can't just be all oh, nice, Sister J, all the time. You can't do that. You don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. You can't prophesy to people and not want to hurt their feelings because sometimes the Lord will give you a hard word. Turn from your wicked ways. Stop cheating on your husband and get back to, to the things of God. And if you're too nice, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But I listened. I listened to the words that he gave me because one conversation one conversation can help you skip 10 years of trial and error. This is why the devil loves for us to be in pride and loves for us to think we know so. Because we'll be in, honey, we, if you could have if you could have listened to one conversation and your destiny could be changed the whole course of your life. It shaves years off. That's why you have to listen. And another thing is this. Nobody had to tell me to pour into my mentors. Baby, I, uh, how much? What's your cash out? I sent him money because it was on my heart. Oh, is that, is you, do you got, are you paying for the word of God? You're not paying for the word of God, but baby, you're feeding my spirit, man. I don't have to go through trial. You, you get, you pay money when you eat food. So now that you're spiritually being fed, you should sow into the people that sow into you. And it don't have to be money. If you're in close by them and you can go and do different things to alleviate the stress, because when you alleviate the stress and the pressure off of your mentors, off of the man of God or the woman of God at your house, they can stay in the face of God. They can continue to keep their ear. They don't have to be distracted by the things that you can do. Come on. And some people, you, one of my spiritual daughters, listen, the oil is just so heavy on her life because we were so connected. She came and lived with me for a season. Come on, people of God. And whatever I needed her to do, it wasn't it wasn't no jealousy. It wasn't no extra stuff. It wasn't no talk back. She just trusted because she seen how I lived. She trusted the word of God that came from my mouth. If I said, that's not good or that's good, you're doing an excellent job. Come on. You have to be willing to let God be God and, and, and send the people and then follow the instructions. Think about your own life if you're a parent. And you know that you've tried to talk to your children about, listen, Johnny, don't do that. It's just, she's not a good person. He's not good. Listen, just don't do that. That's just, you know, you're trying to save them from, from, from those potholes. You try, listen, you can skip a whole season of life if you just listen. That's the blessing. Okay. That's the blessing. It's just like uh, Saul, whenever they, he was like, listen, the Lord sent him, I mean, his father sent him to go find his donkey. And Saul was like, listen, well, maybe we can go see the seer. And Saul said, I mean, I would go see the seer, but I don't have nothing to give him. Because Saul, he knew there was honor. There was honor in sowing into a man of God. That's separate from sowing into a ministry. And I don't, it ain't about money, but at the end of the day, I've never had, no one has ever had to ask me to sow into them. And for me, because I know people, people, um, people, um, mishandle it. And so I was like, God, you know, I don't want to be putting my cash out. It's just doing too much. And the Lord said, you're not allowing people to sow into good ground. So now you're robbing them of their blessing because you're getting in your own way. Come on, people of God. We, we sold into everything else. We sold into the liquor store. We done sold into the weed man. Come on, people of God. We done sold into the beauty shop. We done sold into the barber shop. We done sold into the online fashion. Come on, people of God. Listen, we're sowing into the appearance of godliness, but not the power. So we got to see our relationships. It's like sitting at the table. You don't go to the restaurant and eat the food and just be like, you know, that was good. Bless God. That was good. Stop eating for free, people of God. Stop eating for free. Okay. I want us to be mindful of honor of the relationships that God has sent. Everything is not about marriage. Some of it is about ministry. Okay. God is so good. 
He's so good that he wants us to get whatever message he wants us to get. He'll he'll listen. I, you, they say freely give, freely receive. And people are like, you know, you freely got the word. Baby, no, you do not know how I got this word. I don't get much sleep. The Lord likes to wait till I get this close to sleepy, this, uh, just hug, oh, just uh, lights out, and then he want to give me a word. So now I have to get up. It costs something for this oil. Come on. It ain't free. It don't. It ain't free to me. It, it's not free to me. And so he talks to me, but it's my time. I have to get up and be obedient. If he tells me to get up and write it down, I got to turn the light on. I got to find a pencil and paper. I got to turn and write notes in my phone. And then once I'm up, then I'm praising God because I just be like, oh, God, that's good. So it's not free. It's not free, people of God. And no, you don't let the world teach you how to serve God and sow into the kingdom. Uh, honey, I'm not about to give the pastor all my money. He got a big boat. He got a big house. Baby, I worked hard long before I met any of y'all. Come on, people of God. I've been working hard since I was 12. But we rob ourselves of a blessing when we sow into the man of God or the woman of God in a word that has changed our life. I know for myself, I've been upset. Because I've heard a life-changing word and I didn't have any way to sow into it because they didn't have anything. And I, I would have actually search and seek. Where do I sow? I, dang, I can't find them. find an email. I find all these things. I can't find nothing to sow because you want to give people the opportunity. When you're a blessing, someone should be a blessing. Back to you without being told. We have to understand this. People in the world telling you all that stuff at the end of the day. This is what I believe about God. I don't care about none of that. We're confused. People are just vessels. Whether they follow their own advice, the word of God that God gives them, whether they do or not, don't worry about that. The Lord told, them, listen, don't don't do as they don't do as they do, but do do as they say, because I am talking to them. They do hear my voice. See, if you get, I'm not about to sow it to them. Even when I give to homeless people, if they, if they take this money and do wrong, I just believe everything I got is anointed. Come on, even my pennies, even my bank card, all of that, it's anointed. And so if I give you something out of this treasure chest, it's good. you ain't going to be able to have it. You can go buy beer, but it ain't going to be good. You can go buy weed, but it ain't going to get you high. Come on in the room. We gotta, there's a higher order, people of God. We have to sow into ministry. When you when you're being fed from a ministry, we 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 want to tip God. It's not good. We want to say this is my church, honey. Yeah, yeah, it's my church. I love my past. I love my lead. I love and ain't sowing in the first. We're tipping God a twenty. No, bring your ten into the storehouse. Well, we're not under the law, baby. Listen, Melchizedek sold way before the law, and then Jesus told the disciples, bring your tenth, bring your tithe into the storehouse. He said that. But tithing, the blessing about tithing is that it rebukes the devourer. Your things won't be consumed. Let me tell you, I love God, y'all. If you just be obedient. The other day, I was like, Lord, okay, here we go. So it's time to pay the bills. I was like, okay, this is how much money I got. It's the bills, okay. And so I called, I had a bill that was $160. And the past due balance was $70. So I called. I was like, okay, I'll do 100 on that bill. Cool. So I called. And they was like, okay, the total. The lady said, the total balance due is $54. Girl, no, this bill. Girl, you, that ain't the first time that's happened. See, if it takes faith to even sow and tithe. Because sometimes you don't think you're going to have enough. They'll call it a glitch. There's a glitch in the system. And somehow your bill was already paid. It ain't a glitch. It's God. It's trusting God with even your finances. He said, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches and to my glory. Okay, people of God, we have to be willing to obey God. All in, all out, through and through. You have to bring your tithe into the house of God and then sow your time. Come clean the church. I promise the best revelations I would get was when I was ushering at church. When I'd be cleaning, I'd be like, oh, that's good. I'd be sitting there serving. It humbles you. I, I bless God for my training. I bless God for my mentor. And then I, the Lord sent me to uh, Miracle Life in, in Louisville, Kentucky. And I bless God for sowing the Lord. The man of God said, the Lord put it on my heart to tell you, shut your whole ministry down and come under here, come under Miracle Life for a season. And I was obedient because also the Lord had told me, but I was obedient to that. So this is the thing. If you're obedient to the man or woman of God, and let's just say that I don't want to be like, honey, submit because then they lead me astray. Baby, God is God. 
And if they lead you astray, they not they can't they don't have that much power. The Lord just may allow you to see something. So then whenever you're when it's time for you to do ministry, you'll know, oh, we're not gonna do that. Because I remember how it made me feel. Stop being so offended when people fall. Stop calling it church hurt. I don't necessarily believe in it. You didn't have relationship hurt and you're still getting those. You didn't have work hurt and you still keep going back to work. You didn't have restaurant hurt and you still keep ordering food from there. You didn't have online shopping hurt and you still keep owning uh shopping online. Okay, Jesus Christ was the only one without sin. Sometimes you're reaping. We just don't like when we reap from the church. You don't get to choose, baby, who you reap from. But you, sometimes you're just reaping the seeds that you've shown, sown. And then sometimes God is just showing you when I give you a ministry, you don't handle people this way. We got to stop being so offended with people. We all have sinned and we all have fallen short. Now, if you never sinned and you never fallen short, then go ahead and hold it against them, post it online, tell all their business, their mama, their daddy, their grandma, go ahead, do all of that. But if you've never sinned and you've never fallen short, go ahead. But we all have. Sometimes it's just God using it. Okay? I, I don't know how you live, but the way that I hold my peace in my life, the way I hold my peace is I just believe without a shadow of a doubt that my life is not in God's hands. So if they treated me right, it was the will of God. And if they treated me wrong, God's going to use it for his glory and it's still going to turn out for my good somehow, some way. I don't have to be offended. I don't got to be talking about people. Okay, bless God. Now I know how not to treat people because I know how that feels. People that have been mishandled have the most compassion. Okay. Even the devil, when the devil came to seek Job, the, he had to get permission. As a matter of fact, the Lord signed you up to be mistreated. Come on. The Bible says the father God, he sent his son. He sent his son. The Lord signed him up. He sent his son to die on the cross so that you could be saved and I could be saved. You got signed up by God to be mistreated. So now who are you going to argue with? So it wasn't the pastor. It wasn't the preacher. It wasn't the prophet. It wasn't the prophet. It wasn't the apostle that treated you bad. The Lord signed you up. Okay? And it's not to kill you. It's to build you. It's not to kill you. It's to build you. It's to perfect you. It's to see where your heart is. It's not about God being mean. It's not about people don't do, honey, we got people in these church people kill me, blah, blah, blah. You church people too. Okay, we gotta. We have to be mindful of the relationship connections that God has given us, and let's handle them correctly, people of God. Let's handle them correctly. You gotta get out of your own way. I'm never gonna encourage you. See, and it's important to when God is is training you. It's you gotta be careful listening to too many different people because they're. It's diff Every church has a different mandate. The church of Ephesus had their mandate. The church of Corinth had their mandate. So when you start eating from all of these tables, you, 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 you can get yourself confused. Well, this church, blah, 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 and that church, it was certain churches and, and ministries that the Lord led me to for a season. But then he was like, okay, that's enough. There was a certain ministry that the Lord walked me through for about a good two years. And it, it was such a, a powerful deliverance ministry. And it was great for my deliverance. But they were very bound by vanity. The pastor from the pulpit to the door, baby, you don't know. I didn't know if it was a church service or if it was a, 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 a R. Kelly concert or, or a Lil' Kim concert or a Nicki Minaj concert. I don't know which one it was because we're so worried about fashion. And so when the Lord began to deliver me from vanity, I, he said, you got to come away because now you're, you're, you're sending your, your mind and your spirit mixed messages. I'm trying to tell you that that's not good, but they're going to tell you, oh, girl, it don't take all that, honey. You can just listen, honey, come on. It's because they're still captivated by vanity. So they're not going to tell you, they're not, but I'm taking you somewhere else. So you got to be willing to go with the flow of God. Then when the Lord began, there was another ministry that I really love. And the woman of God, she's very animated and just, woo. And I just thought it was so wonderful. But then the Lord said, I'm trying to deliver you from the entertainment gospel. Because now we got people that are so much of a personality. That the word of God is being smothered in all they funness all their flamboyancy all their come on their per the bible says jesus made no reputation for himself 
He made no rep. It was no reputation. Listen, it was no, you know, he's Jesus, the one that always got the three piece suit. You know, Jesus, the one that always, the one that I know there was no, whichever way God sends me. Come on. That's why I don't have no, I don't have no set way to come and share this gospel. Listen, if, if I'm dialed up, bless God. If I'm dialed down, bless God. If I got a bonnet and a bathrobe, bless God, just get the word because we're so mixed up. And we're getting everything but God. Okay? I want us to understand our seasons. Because when it is time for that person to go on on, Elijah, listen, he just get up and go. And that's me, baby. Whatever the Lord tell me, you better take advantage of the season. Well, I thought you was going to be. Girl, listen, I do what God tell me to do, honey. I don't know. That's, that's, what, I, that's what we was doing. But then the Lord said, shift. Okay, so you can't be, oh, they wishy-washy. No, baby, I'm just following God. And it's okay. People can have their opinions about you. Because at the end of the day, you don't have to stand for them and they don't have to stand for you. I want us to get concrete in who God has called us to be and that he uses us uniquely and individually. And then it'll be certain times. That's why it ha it's, it's so important to just follow the spirit of God. Certain times, the Lord will tell me, okay, get dialed up. Because there's someone that he's going to catch. And they'll say, ooh, for me, I don't know your testimony. The first person that caught my eye was Sarah Jakes. When I really began to listen for my own self. And the only reason I stopped scrolling was because she had on this really cute outfit. And I was like, ooh, that outfit's cute. And so I began to listen to her for a season. But then when the Lord began to take me higher, he said, okay, but I have more. I don't want you to stay. I don't want you to stay right here. I want you to come up higher. Different ministries have different mandates. Some ministries are just to catch the fish. And then you might have another ministry that's, that's to, to, to clean the fish. And then you might have another ministry that is to groom the fish. And then you have another one that is to prepare and to serve. So you got to know where God, just let God be God. Whichever way he's doing it. However he's using the people. As long as you get in the word, don't get caught up. And none of the other stuff, if the Lord sent you, stay where you are planted. Eating off too many tables is getting us food poison. Come on. So I want us to just be obedient to what God is saying in this season. Don't get mixed up. Don't mix up the relationships. You're taking people common that God has put in your life to grow and groom you. But if you take what they were, what their, you take their words as, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I can kind of listen. It's, that's why you're not getting full results. Because if you kind of take the doctor's prescription, you don't get full uh, healing. Well, the doctor said, keep the cast on for three months. And then you be like, well, I am, honey, I'm just, I'm not about to do that. I don't even like this cast. It don't match my outfit. So I'm just leaving it on one week. And then you're like, dang, why is my ankle still hurting? Because you didn't follow the full prescription. God has given you a prescription and you got to be willing to take it. Okay. The Bible says, believe the prophet. And receive the prophet's reward. Well, why didn't I? Well, why didn't I get what he, he said? I was gonna be married in six months. Well, you didn't first of all believe him, and if you believed him, then you would do the instruction of the prophet. Come on, and then you would seek the, then you would get the prophet's reward. Believe the prophet, and you will succeed. Okay, people of God. So I, I don't have a whole bunch else. Um, I do want to talk about for a brief moment life coaching, my one-on-one -on -one sessions. If you are uh, interested in life coaching, if you um, feel like that these conversations are really for you, you it's really connecting with you, and you want to sit down and do that one on one, and and it does cost. It's not free because I'm only one person, and I do believe that at the end of the day, if you never have a one on one with me, that God is so God that He's still gonna make sure you get everything you need. But for those of you that are interested in having that one on one, those one on ones. Um, and I know sometimes we'll say, I can't afford it. But really, sometimes you cannot, you can not afford to do it. And when God begins to shift you, it's those, the things we've been spending our money on, the sin that we've been spending our money on, you just use that for the upbuilding of your church. You are the church. For the upbuilding of your temple to be able to do the things that you need to do. You got it. You're just putting it in the wrong space. If we stop eating out and just have us some little sandwiches for lunch, bless God. If we stop uh, smoking weed, drinking liquor. If we stop going to the nightclub, spending so much at the hairdresser. Come on. It's money there. You, you have money for what you need. 
Okay, we got to be mindful of that because the Lord says where your heart is, there so also is your treasure. Your your treasure is there, your money. The way you spend your money, it shows what's in your heart. Okay, many of us, we spending more money on our outfit for Sunday and ain't sold into the church the first bit. But we look good. Ain't tired the first bit, but baby, we look good. We come on in the room. We got matching. We look good. So I want us to be mindful of um of that but if you would love to do that i do one-on-one -on -one individual sessions i do um couple sessions and uh, i do family sessions i also offer a um a service where i can come to you it doesn't matter if you don't live where i live now i ain't quite overseas yet but bless god listen i'm willing to go where the lord sends me but um i'm willing to come and some families are just in such turmoil that you need somebody to come and sit down be a part of the conversation let me come spend a few days with you and your family and um let's unravel let's unravel it'll be the greatest gift that you can give yourself it's the greatest gift that you can give to your family. It's the greatest gift. Some people, you just need a mediator to have those conversations because sometimes we're arguing and a lot of times arguing, we're, we're missing, you're, we're all saying the same thing and it boils down to, I'm hurt. I'm hurt, but I don't know what to do because all I've learned to do is cuss, yell, holler, and scream, throw bottles, pop, pop pills, smoke weed, drink. I don't know. I don't know the correct correct way to interact with you so that I can get this off of my heart. But let's untangle from our past, stabilize our current situation, and push forward to a productive future. Okay, so that is what I do in my life coaching sessions. I also um, am open to doing for those that let's say, okay, I need coaching, but I literally don't have no money. I mean, literally not. I'm not smoking weed with my money. Come on. I, I, there was a season in my life when that was my life. I was homeless with my kids and I didn't have, I didn't, that's, but listen, I was, Sarah Jakes blessed my soul on that. And so when I got some money, I sold into the ministry. Come on. Um, stop eating free at people's tables, y'all. But um, there is an a, a option that I'm offering because I believe that if we are willing to be open, somebody else can get deliverance from your story. So if you are interested in doing one on one, but it will be live, it'll be live and we'll talk and you just never know who somebody's going through the same situation. Oh, but my life is private, baby. Listen, everybody know you might think it's private, but we can see it. What's in your heart is being seen. People might not know how to express it, but you never know. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. So if you would like to say, you know, listen, I would love to do a one-on-one -on -one live because I just never know. But you got to be willing to be open. I'm not going sugarcoat it because we live. Um, but you got to be willing to be open and see what God is going to do. See what God is going to do. Um, all right. I love y'all, people of God. Thank y'all for tuning in for a morning makeover. So let me catch you up to speed a little bit of what we got going on at Makeover Transformation Church this weekend, Friday night, which is tonight. It's our Friday night service. You don't want to miss the word of the Lord tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're in Clarksville, Indiana. 625 Eastern Boulevard. Tomorrow morning, we're having an All Saints giveaway. If you got some extra things around your house, clothes, appliances, dishes, things that you don't need, bring them. Let's give them to the community. Be a blessing to someone or come and receive a blessing. Um, we'll also be out there praying with people, talking to people, uh, sharing the word of God. And so let's um, come together and do that. That's at 10 a.m. We'll be setting up at 9 Clarksville, Indiana is where we're located, 625 Eastern Boulevard, Makeover Transformation Church. Um, we will, our service tonight will be live on Facebook and TikTok. Uh, we'll be live on Facebook on Makeover Transformation Church page. Then at um, 6 p.m. tomorrow night, we're having our refreshing and refilling service. Come and get refreshed. We're going to have a worship service um, led by Minister Porter Cannon and his wife. So I am really blessed to uh, see how God is growing, grooming and growing their family. So come out and then come back on Sunday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. And there will be another word from the Lord. Um, the name of our church is called Make Over, the same as this channel, Make Over Transformation Church.
Makeover Transformation Church, and we're in Clarksville, Indiana. So that is what we have coming up. We have our youth conference coming up in, I can't believe, I don't know if it's next week or the week after, but we have our youth conference coming up. And we also have our uh, purity conference coming up shortly after that. So it's always something good going on. I believe the best way to stay out of sin is to keep your hand to the plow. If you don't know what to do, call, inbox me. Come on, my email address is aj at makeovertc.org. Okay, aj at makeovertc.org, and uh, let us put you to work. You can be a part of Makeover Transformation Church. You don't have to go to this church. You can be a part of, I mean, you don't have to live in this city, but you can be an active member here at Makeover Transformation Church. We need all hands on deck. We got so many wonderful things going on. Don't miss your season of restoration, transformation, and release. Okay, people of God, I'm so glad that you joined me this today. Lord, thank you for this word on today. Lord, thank you for the people today, God. We ask that you continue to bless us, continue to watch over us, oh great God. Give us wisdom and give us strategy for today, Lord. Bless us with your favor and your understanding and your guidance that only comes from you, God. Go with us this day, Lord. Help us to be concrete in our soul that no matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter what happens on today, you are the author and the finisher of our faith and nothing that is going to happen today catches you off guard. It will work together for our good and for your glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. I will give you an opportunity to sow into this word today. My cash app is um, dollar sign number four all dolled up my cash app is dollar sign number four a l l d o l l e d u p all right one more time cash app is dollar sign number four a l l d o l l e d u p so let God bless you on today, y'all, and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. I won't be back for a morning makeover until Monday, but we're actually doing something different. I will not be live on TikTok. <coughs> Next week, I will not. I will only be live on um, Facebook, 7 a.m., and we'll be going over my book, A Doll's 90-Day Devotional. If you have not ordered it from Amazon, pick it up. It's not like, oh, it's just for women. It's just for girls. No, I'm the doll, daughter of the living, loving Savior. And it's a 90-day devotional. It ha Listen, it'll bless you. It'll bless you. Make sure you read it and then um, share it with somebody. It's available in ebook and it's also available in uh, paperback. So, all right, y'all. Y'all have a good day on pur purpose. Blessings and peace, people of God. Uh, my cash app one more time. Um, Dollar sign number four A L L all dolled D O L L E D U P. All right, cash out dollar sign number four A L L D O L L E D U P. All right, y'all, have a good one.